Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou School Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about inspiration, leadership, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is one of the star players on our University of Hawaii men's volleyball team. He is Chaz Galloway, and today we are going beyond national championships. Hey, Chaz, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Hi, uh, thank you for having me on the show today. Chaz, you are such an incredible player. I mean, it's so exciting to watch you, but I want to first ask if you can share, you know, where you grew up and how did you first get interested in volleyball? All right. So I grew up in uh, San Diego, California, and uh, my first introduction to volleyball was actually through my sister. She played when she was uh, 12 and she's 18 months older than me. So I'd always grown up going to the volleyball tournaments, just watching. And I was a dual sport athlete. I was playing football, running track, playing soccer, you know like what most young kids do. And in football, I got my fourth concussion in my eighth grade uh, year. And so my mom was like, you know, we're done with football. I'm not signing you up for that anymore. And she was like, why don't you go try and play volleyball? And I was like, I didn't even know if they had men's volleyball at the school I was going to or anything like that. But she signed me up and the rest is history after that. Wow. Yeah, no, concussions are not good. <laughs> no, yeah, she wasn't having any more of those. Now, Chaz, what, what attracted you to ultimately come to the University of Hawaii? I mean, initially, I was on my unofficial visit, and I was here for the senior night of 2019 against Long Beach and Hawaii. And I was in the Stan uh, Sheriff Arena and just seeing all, like, the energy and the fans and the culture around volleyball here. I was like, this is where I wanted to play and continue my career. So, so literally, the Stan Sheriff Center is, do you say that that's the best arena in the nation for college volleyball? I would say it's one of the best arenas in the world for volleyball. I mean, the, the fans and the culture, like I said, is, is you can't find that really anywhere else at any level, even in the pro level. I mean, having thousands of fans there weekly, day in and day out, is uh, something that you don't really see. And it's, it's really nice to have that environment to play in. Now, Chaz, you are a fifth-year senior, and so every year, have you been to the national championship final every year? And then you guys, you guys won two back-to-back -back national championships, right? Yes. Yeah, so since I've been here, I've been in the national championship every single year. Besides my freshman year due to COVID, this season was uh, cut short. But other than that, yeah, I've been in the national, national championship every single year. Man, that's amazing, Chaz. And Chaz, I want to ask you, when, when you guys won that first national championship, and then the following year you won that second national championship, what are some of the reasons why you guys won that? I would say the culture, the culture of excellence that we have here at the, on this uh, program was the main defining factor that we were able to be in the national championship year in and year out. Um, we, we don't really, we, we train really, really hard and we have that goal and in, our, uh, in the beginning of the year, we have this goal that we always set and it's just like, okay, winning the Big West and winning the national championship. So have, after having those, we, we can set our eyes on them and hope to go out in there and uh, get them. Now, you guys, I mean, you're in a tricky situation now. I mean, there's high expectations. I, I'm sure you have high expectations of yourself and the team and and the public i mean they have high expectations as well now how do you deal with that personally i mean the pressure is always there and as an athlete you you want to have that pressure you want to feel like you know this means something bigger than you and it's it's more than just a volleyball game and so dealing with that i mean as an athlete you just you're a competitor and you want to compete at the highest level so dealing with the pressure and that it, it, it's, it's, it'll always be there, but we just have that in the back of our minds and just go out there and trust what, what, we've, what we've done and the work that we put in. Now, it seems that you and uh, Speedos Hawkus, I mean, you guys uh, have a close friend. I mean, you guys are super close friends. 
and he's such an integral part of the team. What, what, is, what do you admire about Skeetal Sakas? His leadership, uh, his mentality, too. Uh, if you've been watching the games, he's, it seems like he's always like angry out there on the court, and just knowing like, how much it means to him and the work that he puts in, it, it really translates to me and a lot of the younger guys knowing that like, this is really what he wants, and he puts his mind to that goal, and he's able to go out there and achieve it. Yeah, you know, I, I can see his passion. I mean, we can all feel his passion. And then specifically as a leader for him, as being one of the leaders of the team, what specifically does he do to really help you guys gel together? I think he brings, like you said, that passion and that energy that we need. He's like that, the, our, the battery on the team. He's always, you know, giving 100% effort and practice in games and you know, he's uh, really good with his words, He's really good at calming us down when we need to on the court. If we're getting a little frantic or, you know, the nerves are there. He's like, just send me the ball. We're going to side out, get this point. And it's just like next point. And he's like, don't worry. I got you guys. I really appreciate that about him. <laughs> now, Chaz, um, I was at your Hawaii men's volleyball fundraiser um, last year and this past year. And Ryan Tanaka, who you know had bought a table and and had invited me and and his other friends and clients there, and it's such an incredible event. I mean, it's I mean, everybody there. It's it's just grown to become this huge thing. I mean, how how does that make you feel and your teammates feel when you see all this support there? It's a really nice feeling. Uh, like you said, the support is everything. We don't really get to engage with the fans too much, like right after the game. So having a day or an event like that where we can come together and, you know, eat a little food, talk story is really nice. I think for the players and the fans and the, the community, just having people there that aren't only going to show up for the games or when we're having success, they're there, you know, when we're just going throughout our day and we really want to know how we're doing and what we're doing and be a part of our life. Yeah, no, that's so great. And, and Ryan Tanaka also did a book donation of both of my books to your entire team last year. And, um, you know, it was so great meeting and, you know, talking with Coach Charlie in depth. But um, Ryan is also the founder for Brotherhood and Sisterhood Grinds. And, and that's such a, that's a whole nother thing that's so exciting for UH sports. But I want to ask you, Chaz, what are some things that stood out to you in my books? Uh, the one of the biggest takeaways I took away from the books was uh, the setbacks are opportunities for comebacks. And like a lot of people know that we lost in the national championship last year. So that was a setback for my career. And uh, this book helped me realize and kind of come up with things like, how am I going to come back from this? How am I going to continue my career? How am I going to grow from this uh, minor setback? Because there's setbacks all throughout life and just finding ways to navigate those and finding ways to come back from those and achieve your goals is, is, is a huge thing that I read. No, I, I love that you mentioned the setbacks. And then you also know about the four P's, right? Yeah, the four P's. Uh, people, purpose, was it, the process equals performance. Yes, yeah, I'm impressed. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome, Chaz. But you know, that that's literally the framework for success. And, and for me, I like to keep things really simple and clear. Um, and so for in on beyond the lines, I wanted to create that framework for achieving success and then to also sustain success. And that's where you guys are in right now. I mean, it, it's hard to get to the top of the mountain and it's even harder to stay there. So what are you, what are you doing personally to really try to be at your best to try to sustain success for yourself and the team? I would say trying to pass along uh, the culture that we've established here over the years. It didn't start with me. It came uh, with guys that came way before me. And just trying to keep that culture going, that culture of excellence that, uh, you know, we have high standards here and we're going to do everything in our power to achieve our goals. And it's like there's, there's nothing that can really stop us but ourselves. So having a good mindset and going into every day, like it's a new challenge. It's a new adventure. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so let's let's go into mindset right there, Chaz. So, I mean, you're a champion, national champion, two-time national champion. 
what what is the mindset of champions when you're in practice because for me as a coach i wanted to simulate practices just as much pressure as it would be in a match um i wanted my players to perform the same way in practice as they did in matches what's your thoughts about that i would say the competitiveness like in practices that we have we have so many good guys in practices that it makes it feel like it's a game and i used to say this earlier on in my career that practices were actually harder than the game day itself because of you know the energy and the, the passion and the drive that these guys are going at they're giving a hundred percent they're trying to either you know make that starting lineup or you know just trying to improve every single day so just having like that type of practice environment really makes it easier for the games because if you're going hard in practice and you're, you're giving a hundred percent there you're able to trust your abilities in the game and everything just kind of pans out when when it's go time all right, Chaz, let's get into some details here. I mean, pe people that know you, they they see this air Galloway. I mean, you you <laughs> get up there. I mean, it's it's like you have springs in your legs. Um, you know, people know Air Jordan, but we now know there's Air Galloway here in Hawaii. I mean, <laughs> how do you do it? How do you get up there? Uh, my mom will say it's from the Johnny Jumper that I had as a kid. Uh, she'd always put me in there, and it's this little thing that you hang up in the door. Sorry, water bottle that you hang up in the door frame. And as a baby, I'd just sit in there and jump and kick my legs uh, day in and day out. And then uh, growing up, I was on a trampoline as much as I could be, you know, jumping. I love to jump. I love to challenge myself. I'd be at Disneyland and be like, "Can I touch that? Can I jump up and reach that?" And I would just test my abilities over and over and over again, and it just kept growing. So I got to I fortunately in, in a sport where you know jumping's the, the main thing so it, it helped me there okay and Chaz, i mean that's so funny how you're like i, I want to touch that <laughs> let's see if i can touch that uh, always challenging myself oh yeah <laughs> i still do it i'm like hey, that ceiling's kind of high can i get up there and i'm like i might as well try yeah i'm gonna keep doing it until i can't for sure <laughs> so so Chaz, um uh, you have a lot of strengths. I mean, as a player, I mean, you have a lot of strengths. Obviously, spiking is one of your strengths. I mean, how how does it feel when you're really getting up there and then you're just like, you get that perfect set and, I mean, the timing and the rhythm, everything's there. I mean, how does that feel? It feels amazing. I mean, I like to describe it as like a zone. A lot of athletes can, you know, attest to that. It's like you get in this rhythm on the court it just feels like everything is clicking, like everything just coming natural. And uh, we have a great strength program and great coaches that maintain our bodies. And so it's like when game day does come around, I feel like I'm at 110%. My legs are ready to go. My mindset's good. And so it's like mentally preparing before that is, uh, is a big process that I, I like to take. But once I'm out there, it's like it's go time. It's just let's just do it. Let's give 110% and, you know, live with the results. Yeah, no, I know. I love it. And let's talk about blocking. I mean, you guys are are incredible um, with with the blocks that you guys are are doing. I mean, what's what's the key for your guys' success as block when you're doing blocking? I think a lot of it has to come with our coach, uh, Milan Zarkovic. Uh, having a European coach like that, he's uh, big on defense. You know, I, and I like to say defense wins games. Uh, you know, a lot of people at this level can go ahead and side out and score. And, um, but I think a lot of it comes down to in these big games is defense. How, how often can you block the team? How can, how often can you disrupt what they're trying to do? And so just paying attention to the little details is a huge thing on blocking, like just getting over the net and being right next to your blocker and pressing and trying to take away as much court as you can for your defenders behind you. Their job is so much easier. Is it like, what's going through my mind when I'm trying to block, just touch the ball. I'm not even trying to block it, honestly. A lot of the times I'm just like, just touch it, just slow down the ball. For I trust that my teammates behind me can go back there and uh, get a dig and we can side out. Okay, I, I love these insights. And so you mentioned Coach Milan. W what's yeah. another thing that you admire about Coach Milan? His passion. He, he might be the one of the most passionate people about volleyball that I've ever met. He uh, eats, breathes, lives volleyball. And I think we see that every day and like the, the effort that he puts into us and he treats us like family, like we're his kids. 
And so, I mean, I really respect that. And I love him for that. Cause it's like, he's giving his all. So it makes us want to go out there and give us, give our ourselves. 100%. Now through, yeah, no, that's great. And through these years, um, we, we had the addition of coach Kupono Fay. What, mm-hmm. what, what kind of big positive impact did coach Kupono have on the team? I think his perspective, because he's uh, he went overseas and played uh, at the highest level that there is, and a lot of guys that like look up to him on that. And so he brings this perspective into it, where it's like he's been there, he's done that, and he's able to give us little tips and tips and tricks to what he's learned. And uh, he, I mean, he's a great passer. He was a great passer, and I, I like to follow behind him and improve my passing as much as I can. So I'm going to him every day, like, what can I do better here? What should I have done there? And he's always giving me these little nuggets of gold that I'm like, I didn't even think about that. In this last game, uh, he was like, let's just push all the passers to our right and let's have you take up half the court. And that's my first time in my career where I'm like, I'm taking up more court passing than I ever have before, but I trusted him and he trusted me. And he's just like, make, make this little move uh, before the server is serving the ball. And I was like, okay, I love that he can see that and give me insight off the court that I, I can't see when I'm out there. Oh, I, I love these details, and that that's why he's brilliant. And and I want to ask you about Coach Charlie Wade. What what are some reasons why he is a successful coach? I mean, I think there's a hundred different reasons why he's a successful coach. I, I don't know if I'm able to pinpoint one, but he um he holds us to the standard of profession that I think that a lot of coaches should adapt and it's just like he he's trying not to only make us the best volleyball players but the best young men in life and he's always just trying to just help us wherever he can and I think that goes beyond volleyball if you have a coach like that that's really looking out for you and really wants the best for you like that's going to translate into volleyball and you're going to trust him and be like okay he's done this before he knows what he's talking about and I, I think that that's one of his strongest uh suits Oh, I, I know Coach Charlie for many years, and I, I got to agree with you. I mean, he, he's awesome. I mean, he has, he has a high standard for himself, and he has a high standard for everyone around him, especially on his team. And, and I want to ask you about teamwork, because obviously one of the greatest parts of volleyball is you have to work as a team. I mean, every player matters. And it seems like all of you are like best friends on the team. I mean, can you tell me more about the importance of teamwork and then your relationships with your teammates? Yeah, I mean, teamwork is everything in volleyball. I like to say it's a sport of chaos and being able to control that chaos is like the, the best thing you can do. So being able to trust the player next to you that he's going to handle his job. And that comes with knowing the person, not just on the court, but off the court, knowing what he's into, what he likes to do, what, what he doesn't like, the feedback, you know what I mean? Like if it, if he's not going to react good to the, that certain feedback, I, I'll know that with those players because they're like my brothers. I spend so much time with them every single day that I'm like, okay, I know what to say to this person. I know what will get all this fired up. I know what will get Tread fired up. I know what will get Spiros fired up. So just having that bond, not only on the court, but off the court is, is amazing. And then we get to go on trips like to Japan and really get the, you know, be around each other in a different culture and see how guys interact with each other is really cool. So it's just like, it's like a big family and it's, it, it just correlates to the court. I, I love how you said control the chaos. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's a big one. <laughs> and, and how you mentioned the, the Japan trip, what was the highlight for you uh, going to Japan? Oh, I would say the food. I, yeah. I'm, I'm a foodie. And so the, the, the food there was just, it was amazing. I feel like I was eating something new every single day that I've seen on like TV or anime. And I'm like, Oh, I'm actually getting, getting to try like these dumplings or whatever they were. I think that was a big part of it. And then the culture, like, I feel like they resemble like Hawaii and the culture of like, just respect. And, um, I think that's, that's a huge thing. They, they had nothing but respect for us and we had nothing but respect for them. And I feel like that you, you can't go wrong with it. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you completely. Japan is amazing. I mean, it's you can see how Japan and Hawaii has such an amazing relationship and then why so many Japanese people love Hawaii and vice versa. 
And mm -hmm. Chaz, I want to ask you about being in the huddle. When you guys are in in a match and you guys after a point's done and you're in that huddle, what are you guys talking about and focusing on? Well, when we come together after plays, it's usually just a reset. Even if we got the point or we lost the point, it's just like, okay, let's let's come back together. Let's reset. Let's talk about what we saw during the play and what we can make changes to. It's always these little micro changes that we, we like to talk about and be like, hey, can you take away this or can you do that? And it's just like, all right, next ball. Because volleyball is such a, you know, fat, uh, such a fast sport. There's there's so many points. You can't get caught up on the last point or what happened, you know, the last game. You have to move on. So it's just like coming together and being like, we got each other. Let's, you know, go back, do our jobs, let's side out. Let's, let's, let's get this going. Now, in I mean, right there, you're talking about present focus because, you know, there's past focus, present focus, future focus. Um, all you can do is really control the present and control everything that you have control of. So, I mean, whether you have the best point that you just had or the worst point, I mean, the most important thing is the next point, right? Mm -hmm. Next point and uh, making sure that the, the boys know that you have their back no matter what. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I think we go into this. It's like, I don't care if you hit the ball out 20 times. I, I, I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to do what I can do. I'm going to come under and uh, dig for you or, you know, cover you. Just go out there and do what you can do. And I trust that, you know, I've seen what you can do and go out there and do it. And Chaz, you, you know, volleyball is similar to tennis in a way where, you know, every point counts as one point. I mean, it's not like basketball where you, you shoot a basket, you get two points. You behind the arc, you get three points. Uh, free throws, one point. Tennis, volleyball. I mean, every point is counts as only one point. So for me as a coach, I wanted to make my team be relentless competitors from the first point to match point. I wanted them to play to run the whole marathon, not just a sprint. You know, and maybe I would relate a sprint to being whether you won or lost the first set. You know, if you won the first set, you're winning, but you haven't won yet. If you lost the first set, you know, you lost the sprint, but you haven't lost yet. What are your thoughts about really running, playing that whole marathon? Um, my thoughts on that would be, like, like you said, it's such a fast-paced sport, and like you can't get caught up on what was happening or, you know, the last plays. And you just got to keep moving forward. You got to keep going. And it's just like, you don't, there's no time. I, I, the one thing I like about volleyball is you have to give 100% each play. There's no plays off. You can't just be like going through the motions out there because like you said, every time someone touches the ball, it's going to be a point for you or a point for the other team. So giving that max effort every single point and not taking any point off or for granted is, is a huge thing. And I love that about the sport of volleyball. Yeah, and the other similarity, too, is um, time cannot run out. I mean, we have to win a certain number of points to win the set, to win the match. You know, there's no stalling. I mean, you, you got to – so you can be down match points, and you can still find a way to come back. And And it's a mindset, and you guys have that mindset. I can see that every point, I mean, is like – like a match point. And, and that's how it needs to be. That's what I wanted my players to be like. So I want to ask you about that. I mean, having the mindset where every point is like a match point. And so you're giving it that 1000% effort and focus. What are your thoughts? I mean, yeah, you nailed it right there. It's like, you, you have to give a, a thousand percent every single point. And there, there, there's no points off. And, um, I think that's the, the the best thing about volleyball is that you know you it's you have to have a great mindset and you have to be have a quick turn turnover on what you're doing out there and um, yeah no I, that's so good and and Chaz I want to ask you about Hawaii now I mean when what are what are some things that you love doing in Hawaii I mean what you said you love food what kind of food and where do you like to go. Oh, off the hook. I, I mean, I love spicy ahi, like poke, anything like that. I mean, I before coming here, I wasn't a big fish fan. I couldn't eat, you know, raw fish. But since being here, I'm like, I crave fish. 
I'm like, I, 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 I love the cuisine here. But my favorite dish would either be spicy out here. I've been getting into the spam with subies. I was like breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, dessert. I, I, I could kill like three or four of those a day. I, I've been really into those. And it's just the, it doesn't have to be bougie or anything. The ones at 7-Eleven get the job done and I'm, I'm sustained and filled after. Yeah. <laughs> See, Chaz, you're local. You're local already. <laughs> I'm starting to change, yeah. <laughs> well, well, when you love Spam Musubi and Poke, I mean, Jakob Tella, I mean, he loved uh, Poke. I mean, he was like the Poke king, right? Oh, yeah. I'd run into him and Ficho at Off the Hook or Ono's. Any 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 sushi spot, any fish spot, I'm like, oh, there's definitely going to be a teammate here if I, if I go. So definitely, definitely seeing him out there. Do you do you like to go to the beach and hiking or you know what kind of activities do you like to do? Yeah, actually, as I've gotten older, I haven't been going to the beach as much. But when I first got here, I was in love with the beach. You couldn't like every single day. I was like, how can I squeeze into my schedule of going to the beach? But after being here for now five years, I'm like, I, I've been to the beach. I've uh, I've seen it. So now it's just like really cherishing the time with the people I have here because I know it's not going to be for forever. So just having that quality time and spending it with people I want to and my friends is, is the biggest thing here on the island. It doesn't have to be the beach or a hike. It can just be one of the boys' house or whatever. But yeah, just, just cherishing the time that I have here is, is the biggest thing. Chaz, um, I want to ask you about Alakai Todd. I mean, he, he's been kind of behind the scenes uh, for a few years, and then now he's like really making a big positive impact on the team. What is it about Alakai that you um, that you respect and admire? His uh, work ethic. I mean, a lot of what you guys don't see outside of uh, the practice gym is um, how hard he does go in practice. And a lot of people, like you said, he ha he's just now coming out of his shell. People are just now noticing what he's capable of and his skill set. And it's just like, I've been seeing that for the last five years. I've been here. He's been dominating practices when Rado was around, when before Demi got here, like he was that guy. And so it's nice to see that, you know, the whole island and people are recognizing all the work and effort that he put in. But as an insider, I'm like, this has been all this. And he's finally getting his time to shine and to show what he's capable of. And I'm I'm super proud of him, of everything that he has done. And I think he can go even further. I think he can be one of the best opposites, if not one of the best players in the country. Wow. And then we have a great young player in Tread, right? I mean, what what is it about Tread that you admire? His maturity. You said he's young, but that, that kid is very mature. He has a, a great mindset. I mean, he's a competitor. He doesn't back down to anyone. He doesn't care if you're five years older than him. He's like, I'm going to go out there and compete. And I think that that's his strongest suit. And as he gets older and as he gets stronger and more wise in the game of volleyball, he's just going to, you know, excel. And the sky's the limit Kaz, I want to ask you one more question before we wrap up. Um, greatness can be defined in many ways. How, how would you define greatness? I would define greatness as improving every single day and um, the influence that you have on people. If you're able to change people's lives for the better, I, I would consider you great. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, along those lines, just, just trying to get better and improve on whatever you're doing is uh you can be great at that may not ever may make it to whatever your standards are but just keep pushing and keep you know grinding and keep doing whatever you got to do to be the best version of yourself that you can be i would consider that as being great i love it Chaz, and you know you're inspiring so many of the youngsters out there so you know if, for them to hear about greatness and the impact that you can have beyond yourself is is awesome Chaz, I want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today. Uh, thank you, Rusty, for having me. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. I hope that Chaz and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.